Hey, Dr. Mikhail Rashik of Merogenomics here. Going to make another update on predictions based on computer modeling on how Omicron is expected to fare in the future. And recall that in the last video I talked about one science group that made such, such predictions based on their own built computer modeling uh, software and today I'm going to talk about another group that did something similar and I really enjoyed the type of data they included because of how enormous the data set was and right off the bat I'm just going to mention hey stay till the end of the video to find out uh, about the upcoming COVID-19 Q&A event I'll talk about that at the end but now let's tell you what they found out right, right away and basically based on their computational modeling involving artificial intelligence. They found that they expect Omicron to be approximately 13 times more infectious than the original starting strain. That's the strain that everyone is currently being vaccinated against and almost approximately three times more infectious than, than the Delta strain. So there you have it. So how did they do it? This is the part that I found very fascinating because in order for them to develop this uh, sophisticated computational modeling, what they did is they queried enormous amount of data. So one thing that is happening in the background is that the genome sequence of the virus is being sequenced all over the world all the time literally millions of these viral genomes genomes are being isolated from patient samples and decoded and we can map evolutionary tree of this pandemic like we've never done before this is the the greatest surveillance of pathogen genomics ever undertaken and it makes sense we're dealing with the pandemic and the in this particular paper they queried over two million different genomes of the virus SARS-CoV-2 virus throughout the world since the start of the pandemic and they determined how the different variants could be impacting meaning different mutations could be impact, impacting interaction with our own human host receptors and just to tell, just to show you the, the, the scope of this and how much this virus is constantly mutating out of those over 2 million sequences of the viral genome, there's at least around 30,000 specific point mutations that were identified in, in the different viruses. So there's literally thousands of variants around the world. They just happen to be in a background. Most of them, they simply disappear. These mutations appear and reappear. And it's only specific events that make a specific variant become dominant. That's actually called natural selection, that there's different special forces acting on that that determine why a particular variant is going to be much more successful at, the, at a given moment than previously. And one thing that we also know of that maybe a lot of people don't know is that we can take amazing images of, of uh, biological molecules, whatever they may be, proteins, DNA, uh, compounds, and we can take images of, of these biological molecules in solution to such an exquisite detail that we can pretty much get exact three-dimensional layout on the atomic scale so we know where every single atom of something like a spike protein is present in space and in relation on of how, for example, spike proteins might be interacting with ACE2 receptors, the human receptors that the virus needs in order to infect our cells. And all of that has been mapped out to an amazing detail. So we have fantastic molecular understanding how spike protein and ACE2 receptor interact on a molecular level to such a degree that these authors can then use that information because this type of information has been captured again and again and you can use all of this information to start building very powerful predictive models where you can actually start taking the known structures and start changing what we know from these structures by introducing mutations that we are capturing in the viral genomes and predicting, hey, how can these mutations be impacting interaction with ACE2 receptor? And you can plot that. You can plot that based on 
how attractive the spike protein becomes to the ACE2 receptor after specific mutations versus how less attractive it might be becoming. And that's how this particular scientific group became famous for that because they were able to make certain predictions with very high accuracy as to basically how variants are mutating in order to increase their binding to the ACE2 receptors. These authors claim that this is the primary evolutionary trend we're observing in a virus. This is the primary mutations that the virus is undergoing during the evolution of this pandemic. And it makes sense, but it's not the only one. And this is how, by the way, they define infectivity and how in scientific literature, basically the infectivity is being defined by enhanced interaction between the spike protein of the virus and the ACE2 receptor of our cells. So that's one evolutionary component and that's what they use to show this type of modeling to show that Omicron basically is way more infectious than what we've seen before, more infectious than Delta and presumably we could expect Omicron to be eventually taking over Delta barring some other natural selection processes that might be taking place in, in a specific geographical locations. The other, the other impact that we have that drives the evolution of the virus though is how well the virus could mutate in order to escape detection. And what I mean by that is to escape detection from our immune system, predominantly say antibodies. So we do know that's happening as well. And they were, these authors recently start, started doing this type of work and studies where they took all of the known structures of antibodies interacting with the spike protein. Again, we've mapped that to an amazing detail where again, every single atom in the antibody, we know how it's placed in a solution in relation to the spike protein and how these atoms between the antibody and the spike protein are interacting with each other, i.e. how attracted they might be between one another. And this is how we determine which antibodies could be neutralizing antibodies. Remember, neutralizing antibodies are the one, are the antibodies that once they bind the virus, they will prevent the virus from being able to infect again. So those are the most valuable antibodies we have. And we have this type of molecular data worked out for well over 100 antibodies at least that's how many they use 130 antibodies interactions with with spike protein that has been mapped out to start predicting future mutations and how they might be impacting interaction with those antibodies in a way these authors have started studying how different mutations in the spike protein could be influencing the immune escape or in other words how the different variants could be escaping vaccine antibodies how they could be become more resistant to vaccines so they started studying that and indeed that's again what we've been seeing throughout the pandemic is that different strains have come out and with each successive strain within last year what we've seen is that the efficacy of the vaccines has been dropping and one of the reasons why that has been taking place is because with each strain more and more antibodies are being are being no longer effective against that strain. And that's because this, those strains are mutating in such way so that these antibodies no longer can recognize it. So logically this makes sense. And they did that also for the Omicron. By the way, these authors in their genius, what they also did is that not only did they analyze how different mutations are showing up that showed to be escaping more and more of these antibodies that are supposed to be attacking the virus, they also mapped that in relation to vaccination rate around the world. So I'll come back to that right away because they found some really stunning observation there. It's actually not a surprise perhaps, but it is the first of its kind that I've seen, so I wanted to tell you about it. But first, when it comes to Omicron and escaping antibodies, 
Omicron appears to be the champion of the world. It honestly appears to be escaping most of the antibodies. So different variants were escaping different antibodies to different degrees. And surprisingly, Delta wasn't actually a really big one. They didn't escape as many antibodies, the neutralizing antibodies, as say, for example, other variants like Beta. So you can see that there's other influencing factors that determine which variant will actually take over, be selected and take over the world or become dominant. So antibody escape is one, enhanced infection is another one. So meaning enhanced interaction with the ACE2 receptor is, is another evolutionary force. But Omicron is, appears to be escaping bulk of the antibodies that these authors studied. So it's by far the biggest immune escape variant yet found. So we went from something that was just showing up little by little in different variants to suddenly, oh my, oh my goodness, Omicron seems to be infecting everyone. It seems to be escaping all of the antibodies that we've produced, whether these seems to be from natural infection or prior vaccination, just Omicron seems to be bypassing everything. So that's what the, the paper showed. But now what it comes down to, how they were looking for true vaccine immune escape variants, they looked for variants that uh, were able to not enhance interaction with the ACE2 receptor, but were able to still escape neutralizing antibodies and they did find some mutations like that that have happened throughout the pandemic and what they were sh what, they, what they studied afterwards is to see how frequently such antibodies showed up as we started vaccination around the world so mass vaccination and Perhaps not surprisingly, what they were able to show that the more vaccination took place in a given geographical location, the more frequently such mutations showed up in the population, which is the first time we see any publication uh, showing, demonstrating how potentially vaccines themselves participate in the natural selection of the virus, meaning how vaccines themselves might be participating and the actual evolution of, of the of the virus itself because what happens is these mutations start showing up because antibodies are attacking it in our population there's so many of us have these antibodies and they're attacking the virus so any mutation that helps the virus then sneak away from these antibodies makes makes it more advantageous so that's how such mutations are then naturally selected so it's the first time that we've actually seen anything like this in terms of publication remember this is only based on modeling so this is only a correlation this does not prove that uh, vaccines are driving the evolution but it's the first demonstrated publications and that I've seen and this is peer-reviewed publications showing how increased vaccination rates were leading to selection of more variants that were escaping the same vaccines and the reason why is because the, it's as if the virus is trying to be able to withstand the fight that we are putting on against it with the antibodies. So the very, very interesting. And in fact, the authors concluded that most likely we are running out of room of how much the virus can mutate to improve interaction with ACE2 receptor and likely the future evolution of the virus will be driven further and more and more towards immune escape, meaning where the mutations will attempt to escape more and more neutralizing antibodies and we might actually be seeing that exactly with the Omicron itself which appears to be the biggest of the immune escape variants we've seen thus far. All right, if you made it this far, I just wanted to let you know we have another event coming up, COVID-19 Q&A number three. So the description to that event is in the link below check it out and uh, there have been a lot of fun i'm looking forward to the next one you can see what kind of questions the audience have asked and that will be attempting to answer during the event and then there will be an open mic period so if you like this video give us a like subscribe to the channel and share the video you know how it works and uh, 
thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out with me on this cold day in Edmonton and happy new year everyone take care everyone ciao for now